Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi vì đăng ký brand với USBTO, cùng Helium Hand, Nutrigo Scout, Logistics và Warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé. Today, we've got Justin back on the podcast who has helped thousands of sellers get actionable insights into optimization of their listings, sometimes even before they have a listing. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the Amazon and Walmart world. We've got somebody who's been helping serious sellers for years here now, Justin from PickFu. How's it going? Great. Yeah, thanks for having me on the podcast. You, you've been around for, for years. Like when I first came to the company, it was actually interesting. You know, PickFu was one of the, or no, was the only company that Manny Coates, the founder of Helium 10, would talk about like on webinars, like an outside company. And, and the only one that we act, we actually were affiliates uh, of you guys, you know, before Helium 10 never did that kind of thing, but we loved it so much. We wanted to do that. And now, of course, as, as most people know, we, we were able to integrate the, the PickFu platform into Helium 10. It's called Helium 10 Audience. But, you know, uh, I haven't seen enough people using it because in my opinion, PickFu, Helium 10 audience, this is something that every single private label seller should be using. So anything less than that is like not enough people are using it, <laughs> but but it's actually a very small percentage I've seen uh, of people using it. So I, I just want to like kind of like refresh everybody's realization and memories of why this is important. So first of all, uh, can you just briefly give an overview of what PickFu slash Helium 10 audience uh, is about, you know, history, like how long you guys been around and what's the main purpose and things like that? Yeah, sure. So, so PickFu is a uh, self-service crowdsource market research service. So, um, at its core, it's a pretty generic tool. You could use it for for anything, and we do have customers who have used it for all kinds of things, from book titles to game characters. And obviously, e-commerce sellers use it for, to test all things about their product. Um, so we've been around for quite a while, uh, kind of in different industries. But like you said, when when Manny mentioned uh, PickFu on the podcast, it kind of helped us out um, in getting traction in the e-commerce space and. We discovered that there's a lot of interesting opportunities for sellers to get data on really important decisions that they probably aren't gathering data on right now. So, obviously, the obvious ones are things like main images and and listing um, assets and stuff like that. But even more importantly, is earlier in the process testing out product concepts, product designs, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, just quickly at its core, like we have a people a panel of people that we reach out to and we pay to give answers and give feedback on you know, which one do they like? Like, which logo do they like? And not only will they choose what they like, but they'll give a written explanation why, some demographic information as well. And it's all very fast, 30 minutes to an hour, it'll be done. Interesting. All right. Now, I, I've used it, I don't know, probably like 50 times. You know, I've, I've run run pick foods and things. And and for me, the, the main, uh, you know, I'll give, uh, I know different people have different, uh, you know, ways to use it. And I, I'm going to want you to talk on that. But, you know, just giving people my personal experience, uh, the, the most beneficial for me is like the main image. Like, uh, I, I always thought, hey, I, I know this is the, the best main image. But like, I would say 75% of the time I ask people uh, what they think is the best main image uh, out of like an option of three or four. 75% of the time, it's not the one that I thought, you know, was, was the best one. So, so that's that like my main thing, but I, I've also, you know, been experimenting with different ways to use it, like different price points. I also, uh, well, you know, now we have business reports in Helium 10 business reports is taking that from Amazon where you can see kind of like the conversion rate of, of your products and like your page views. And so then if I see something you know, weird, like, um, you know, not enough page views or page views goes really down. I'll actually like maybe take a screenshot of how our product looks in the search results and then compare it to some of the other products, which are, have moved ahead of me. And then I'll just ask, Hey, you know, like if you just saw this in the search results, which one would you pick and why? And to me that's, or, or, or I get some very insightful stuff. Like, Oh, I, I like how th th this, the price point, you know, sometimes is important. Sometimes it's, oh, well, the title on this really says what it is. Or some people say, well, you know, from the image, uh, this one looks like it's bigger. I'm like, why do you mean mine's bigger? You know, like, what are you talking about? Like, like there's just stuff that you wouldn't, you wouldn't know about. But 
What about you? Can you talk about maybe three, four, or five different use cases in the last year that you've seen that was pretty, you know, not just the typical one that that I talk about that that you think people are using, you know, PickFu and audience for? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to touch on um, the competitive test you did uh, because I think that's a really important one. We're actually seeing a lot more people doing that. And not only are they taking the screenshots, but they're also getting clever and um, modifying them, right? Because you don't just want to know, obviously you do want to know why they're they're clicking, but you then want to know, well, what if I change my main image? What if I change my title? What if I change my pricing? And what if we all had the same number of stars in reviews? Like what, what does it look like at that point, right? Because then it's giving you a little bit of insight into like the possibilities of, okay, well, if we on a level level playing field, at least I know my image is performing better or my title is performing better. And I just need to work on, you know, getting, uh, getting more ratings and reviews. So um, that is something we're seeing more of. And, and um, savvy people have been either using Photoshop or kind of just like modifying Chrome Inspector and taking the screenshots. We actually built a tool to help this out where um, it's called the Amazon Mockup Tool Generator. Uh, you can go to our website on pickfood.com and, and find it in the header. And what it'll actually do is take in ASINs and pull in that data and then you could just modify it in on the spot so you can like change the title and, and it'll generate screenshots to make this this uh testing process even easier um but yeah that's a really important one because not enough people understand why they're dropping in the rankings or maybe what maybe why they're losing out to a competitor have you seen people use it more like for non-amazon you know like, like we have a lot more we probably have five times as many walmart sellers this year as we did last year or, or shopify or, or other e-commerce yeah. uh, platforms yeah. I mean, we, we obviously work for, we're, we're kind of platform agnostic. It doesn't really matter what you sell on. So we do see a lot of uh, direct to consumer um, sellers testing out their Shopify landing pages uh, or even um, their ads that they're using on Facebook and Instagram, those kinds of things. So we definitely see a lot of, uh, you know, ad creatives the, and it doesn't matter what, what platform you're on. Um but I guess going back to your initial question about like what what other ways that people mm -hmm. are using it, um, one of the ways that we um, that we see a lot is uh, open ended feedback on their listings. So um, you know, as as you're trying to figure out why you may not be converting very well, what you can do is you can just and a lot of people don't know about this about pick food is that you, or audiences you don't always have to compare two things. You can just get feedback on one thing. So you could actually just put it in your listing URL or a screenshot of your of your listing page and say like on a scale of one to five, how would you rate the efficacy of my listing and like what questions or concerns do you still have hmm. about this product? I haven't done that one. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm going to have to write this yeah, down. So I, I like it's that. It's really interesting because I think it, it surfaces a lot of things that maybe you think you've already addressed, or maybe it, it'll surface things that you totally even think about. Like, is it edible? Is it washable? Is it reusable? Like all these questions pop up in people's heads and maybe you're not, you know, highlighting it in the bullets or your secondary images just aren't highlighting it. Um, and the other thing is you can do this on your competitors. Like maybe this is a product that you're going after, right? You're, you maybe you don't even have a product yet, but you want to say like, Hey, like what opportunities are there to improve on this? And maybe if everyone's talking about the price or like, they don't like the design of something, that's an opportunity for you to create a variation or coming at a different price point. So it's a very interesting way to just, to, to get people to talk about, um, opportunities to improve the listing. Okay, cool. You know what? I just thought of something absolutely crazy. What if we, I, I do a screen share and, and we run something right now on PickFu. Let's pick something to, to do for, for, you know, one of our, one of our, you know, project X things, you know, we, we've got a coffin shelf and we've got, um, you know, I, I think the coffin shelf is what, m what most people know about. And so, you know, the one thing about it is, is that we, our sales share ha has gone down. Like, like there's uh, another one that has Amazon's choice and it's like kind of like crushing the game here. But let me, let me just share my screen and, and, and Ju Justin, maybe you can you can have some ideas. So so here's the uh, search results for Coffin Shelf. And, and we've got the number one, um, you know, sponsored ad here. And we've got the number three sponsored ad. This, this is our, our Coffin Bookshelf. And, and for those of you listening to this on the podcast, instead of YouTube, um, you're just gonna kind of have to visualize it but here's the organic first line it's actually interesting that you know our regular coffin shelf is not even the top four here but we've yeah. got this one with amazon's choice and, and this guy is the the main seller 
So, by the way, guys, this is the process I want you guys to go over. Like, you don't just like don't come in and say, "Oh, I'm just going to run this pick for this audience." You got you got to like think it out and, and talk it out loud and figure out what you want to yeah, find out. Finding. So, yeah. um, there's that. The, the, this is just the uh, the sponsored section here, and then here's the Amazon's choice section. My goodness, there's like so many orga or non organic results now. Uh, and then here's our coffin shelf here. Okay, now let me check this. Uh, I'm going to run X ray here. Um, that's another thing that we should be doing, guys. Run X-ray and see see who's who's selling the most. So we've got 253 sales in the last 30 days, and then the top seller is 420. Now, right off the bat, I know you know their price is 21 dollars or 22, and we're 26.97. Okay, so and then we got 67 here. That's our uh, that's our that's our large size coffin shelf. Um, oh shoot, the, the, this competitor is coming up strong. They've got a double coffin shelf that's only thirty dollars. Mm. Okay, all right. Anything uh, hopping off like that that you think, you know, like like should I do one for the images? Should I do one? I mean, I think for the price, it's kind of a no brainer. I don't need to run pick food to know that people like twenty one ninety nine as opposed to twenty six yeah. ninety seven. But anything hopping off to you right now, Justin? That you you, you think we should run something on? Like if you were searching for the uh, the coffin bookshelf, then mm -hmm. which one would you click on in Amazon search results? Probably something whatever. Which one you click on? Okay. Yeah. So if you're all right. So right now, guys, I'm, I'm going to pause this uh, episode. You know, we'll we'll edit this out, but I'm going to like take these images and save them really quick, and then we are I'm going to show you the process of of doing the uh, you know setting it up. All right, guys, so I just downloaded the images of the top three, including ours coffin shelf. And then I went into a uh, pick food and I hit ranked. Uh, you would do the same thing in, in Helium 10 audience, by the way. And I'm going to go ahead and build from scratch here. Mm -hmm. sure. And then I write. So what, what should my, my, my question be? Um, it's like what if you saw these images in the search results for the word coffin shelf, which one? Yeah, which one? Which one would you click on? Yeah, that works. You saw these images in the search of co search result of coffin shelf which one like what, what's the what's the best way to get a like which one would you pick or which one is the most attractive to you or which one makes you li most likely to click yeah which are you most likely to click to learn more about i don't know i'm getting all wordy now <laughs> which are you most likely to click on to learn more about <laughs> and why that's important right sure yeah because they have to okay. give an explanation all right then we hit next step all right add your options all right then this this part guys is where you would put the uh, the next step is the options option a b and c and then this is where i would put in the images remember you know if you're if you're doing price it would just be text you know there, there's a lot of different things so i'm, I'm going to do uh image on this all right, so guys, I actually just had to edit out a little bit here because, and this is something that's important for you guys to know, is when I entered it into PicFu here, because my images sizes that I downloaded were so different, like one of them was the wrong size. And so like immediately people are gonna be biased that, oh, that small one is not good. So you, you might have to edit your, guys, if, if you're just taking images from three different sources, you might have to change the dimensions around um, just to make sure that it's kind of like an equal, equal playing field. So now we go to the next step. Uh, choose the type of poll you would like. So should I yeah, rate, choose the ranked? Rate good. Yeah, that's okay. good for this. Ra when would I use head-to-head? -head? So in a ranked, the, um, everyone is um, asked to rank in their preference. So like, Not only will they choose what they like, they'll actually say their first and second and third choice. Or mm -hmm. however many you did, if you did eight, they would rank them all the way one through eight. In a head-to-head, -head, what happens, they actually do um, every single pairwise matchup. So like, it's kind of like a round robin tennis tournament. It'd be like A versus B, A versus C, A versus D. And so it gathers a lot more data. Um, so it is a lot a lot more work for our respondents and it typically does cost a little bit more, but it is a little okay. bit more thorough. That makes yeah. sense. All right, next step, audience. So I I, I, I want to go Amazon Prime. That, that's what usually I want to do, right, sure. on this? Yep. So I would click custom audience. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to hit custom audience. And, and if I was really doing this for real, like like I would maybe go a little bit deeper, guys. Um, so I, I would look into my brand analytics and right. Seller Central, and I would try and pull some data like, hey, what's the age group of, mm -hmm. of people who buy this product? You know, what's the gender? 
you know, maybe even what's a salary and things like that. You can do that, some of that in Amazon. Then I would take that data here, but then that would make it, uh, you know, it would take a little bit longer to get the results. So I just want to yeah. kind of like get some results fast here. So all I'm going to do is Amazon Prime subscribers. All right. And I selected that. But it's really cool. What are some of the common ones that other people uh, uh, choose here? Yeah. So, I mean, aside from gender and, and income, I would say that there are things like uh, pet ownership. So, it's kind of the behavioral type thing. So, like, do they mm -hmm. own a dog or a cat? Do they like new, um, do they take nutritional supplements? Like, are they uh, cosmetics users? So, those kinds of things are typically um, what we see the most often. Okay. And if there's, if there's like a audience that is not on there, definitely let us know and we'll look into building it. Awesome. All right. Now I hit next step, uh, personality traits. I can, you know, so this is free. I can actually, even though I didn't, so I, I didn't want this to be edited out. Um, I can choose to actually know the, uh, yeah. what the yeah. gender and age. Information. Okay. Yep. Anh chị đang bán hàng trên Amazon. Skybox cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi. Như đăng ký brand với USBTO, từ Helen Ten, từ Jungle Scout, Logistics và Warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé. All right, so next step, I'm going to hit next step and here uh, audience size 50. That, that's usually pretty good, right? Uh, 50 different yeah. people to get some. Yeah. Okay. Everything looks good. I'm going to hit proceed to checkout now. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pay and we should be good to go. Right. Awesome. All right. So now uh, it's actually in the process. So we are collecting data right now. Uh, if you saw these images in the search result of coffin shelf, what are you most likely to click? So at, at, while we're gathering stuff here um, and now this is when are we, this is 12 30, 30 PM. 12.33 p.m. Uh, when I started this. I'm, I'm going to see how many responses we can get by the end of this episode. But what is happening on PickFu's side? Like, what just happened when, when, I, when I went ahead and paid for this? Yeah, so we're reaching out to our panel of people for people that match the, that audience that you're looking for. So in this case, Prime members, or if you had any other uh, targeting, we would uh, filter it down to that. And then we're asking them to, to fill this out. And so they're asked that question. They're asked to, ch to rank the three options and then give her an explanation why. And then they will fill out like kind of a brief demographic survey afterwards to, you know, um, give more information about their, their gender or their age or maybe other things that we're collecting. So for me, you know, my hypothesis, and, and this is what, guys, you always need to start with when you're running any kind of AB, AB split testing. You need to come in with a hypothesis. Uh, of something. And my, now my hypothesis is that probably price is, is the main reason why our sales are down compared to others. Um, and so what I wanted to do was, all right, well, let's just make sure that there's nothing just blaring, you know, on these images. But I, I would like to think that they're going to pick my image first because, you know, we, we actually have a pretty nice image there. But, you know, there very well could be something like I noticed one of those coffin shelves that we picked, they had stickers in it, you know, um, so, you know, does that does that move the needle? Like, oh, this is cool because we get stickers, you know, uh, in it. So, at, oh, my goodness, like it's now 1236 p.m. And we already have some responses here. This is kind of crazy. So if I hit this load responses, I can actually see the 14 people who have replied already. Right. All right. I'm going to hit load 14 responses. And. Oh, option C is oh, goodness gracious. Only four people have picked our coffin shelf so far. Only one person has picked the top one. And this goes with my hypothesis that the only reason people are picking this is that price, you know, because their image doesn't look great at all. Let's see what people are saying down here. Uh, the person who chose ours, I choose A mostly because of the angle. All right. So that's good. That, that was why I did that angle one. But let's take a look here at what people are writing about option C, which is the coffin shelf that had like some stickers. Oh, they like the black with the red back. So they have a red background and looks more unique. Interesting. Uh, another person said the red color. Oh my goodness. A third person said I voted option C because of the red color stands out, draws attention. The fourth person said the red color. So let me look back at these images. It looks like maybe it the back of their coffin more. shelf the actually red is pop. red. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. So who knows? I mean, th this is almost down to the product research stage. Like maybe yeah, I, I should exactly, consider yeah. making a, a version that has this red, this red background because... Mm -hmm. 
holy crap. So you see, sometimes something that you didn't even think, you know, what was going to come up, you know, I thought it was going to be the stickers maybe that, that people are, are picking that third one, but it's about that red color that uh, is popping. All right. Uh, you know, I know you don't have this number just like, or the, this this stuff like right in front of you, but can you think of uh, you know when customers have gone to you and says, "OMG, you know, Justin, like I did this and I found this, and then my sales or my conversion rate went from this to this." Or, or can can you give some of the more extreme stories out there that we can kind of inspire inspire people to let them understand the possibility of what you can do by getting insight like this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a couple of case studies on our website, and I'm, I'll try to remember some stuff off the top of my head, but. Um, you know, even making uh, minor main image layout changes, I think we have one for Yes Bar, which is like a, you know, like a, a snack uh, food bar company. And they just very slightly changed the main image. It wasn't even anything drastic. But just after one poll, they were able to improve their, their click-through rate um, or their sessions by like, uh, I want to say it was like 12% off just like one poll and a minor main image adjustment. Immediately, like, you know, giving a positive ROI on, on, on the PicFu poll itself. So... Um, wow. you know, if you were to keep doing those minor improvements on the title and, you know, maybe even taking the image a little bit further. Um, and like you said, testing out pricing, right? Because pricing could be a factor that could be leading to people not even clicking on your, your, uh, listing and, and definitely not converting into sales. Um, we have a, a, a thorough case study about Thrasio doing a rebrand, um, about their, um, dog deodorizer, um, Angry Orange. So definitely check that out on our website as well, where they actually took one of their brands, which had kind of like a more old fashioned, you know, not sophisticated looking brand, did a whole rebrand on it and, um, you know, massively drove up their sales. Um, so that, that's always a really good one to check out. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I know I was just at the uh, billion dollar seller summit uh, this week and somebody had talked about um, a strategy where it's like, you know, you start you start with with PicFu almost, and you just you know you ready to have a target niche that you want to sell, and you pick the the best selling or best reviewed and best selling product, and then you ask people like what's what's attractive uh, about this product, and then now you come up with your own ideation. Now this is still before you make the product, but then now you come up with the option, and then now you pit that that best selling and best reviewed one versus your mock up version. You know, be it the listing or be it the images. And then you keep tweaking until yours wins. You know, that was something I, I hadn't thought. Of. I think it was Isabella Ritz who had uh, yeah. mentioned that um, yeah. strategy. But but that's another great strategy. Any other any other um, you know examples you can give us or use cases that we haven't talked about? Um, yeah, I've, I've been seeing a lot of, um, let's see, like sets of images being tested. So like as they're as you're working on your entire set of like secondary images and maybe you you're, have different styles or layouts or themes that you're, you're going with. I'll actually have, I'll see people kind of like stitch them all together into like, you know, six different images mm -hmm. and just put the entire sets to compare them. Like, Hey, like as a whole, which one of these sets is more interesting. And that's, that's something we haven't seen a lot of, uh, until recently. So I thought that was a really interesting, uh, use case. Um, we've seen some people doing mood boards and like, just like color themes. So like, as they're, as they're gathering inspiration for maybe like a video or maybe like lifestyle imagery, like, Hey, like, you know, which one of these, uh, like maybe a combination of models and backgrounds and setting and all that kind of stuff, like uh, resonates better with the brand or kind of like gives you the feeling of, you know, security or like healthy lifestyle. So like there's all these emotions you're trying to evoke with, uh, with imagery. And that's not just how you position your product. It's kind of the context that your product is in, in your, in your photos. So, so testing that out even before um, laying your image into uh, your product into it is, is, is pretty important. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, and, and now, you know, I have my own opinion on this and I'll, I'll share it after I get yours, but you know, there, there's an AB testing in, inside of Amazon, you know, like where it's actually on a live listing. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but if you have brand registry, you should do it. And there's actually some interesting insights you can get from it because, you know, they'll start showing you, you know, the breakdown of, 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 you know, how many came from mobile and, and, you know, how many sales came from this and that. But my personal preference is, I, I like to do my split testing not on a live listing, um, regardless of all those extra, you know, benefits I get from using the the Amazon tool. What about you? Like, like, what's why would you say, hey, it's it, it's better or worse to 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 do to do the off Amazon, you know, like a PicFu audience um, yeah. instead of the on Amazon one? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think some of the concerns about doing live A/B testing are well, 
one, it's gonna, it may take a long time, right? Depending on the amount of traffic that you're getting. Um, Secondarily, like you're in, you're negatively impacting your sales, kind of by definition, right? So, like if you're always presenting more than one option, well, one of the options is not going to be as good as the other one. You're going to result in, in lower sales. Um, and if you're live testing something, you're not going to want to test something that's like meaningfully different because you're you know you're you're going to be much more conservative with what you test, right? Because like it is your brand; it's going to be live to your customers. You can't even really test like a a drastically different color theme or a layout or, or any of those things, right? So if you want to do it in a uh, safer sandbox, that's when you would take it off platform to pick food. And then you can kind of, it actually gives you a lot more creative freedom. It gives your designer a lot more creative freedom to be like, hey, I know, I know we always use, uh, you know, black here, but like, what if we jazzed it up and we did like yellow and red? And maybe your target audience actually responds really well to that, but like, you're never going to live test that. That's just, <laughs> yeah. Right? But let me produce 500 units here and then, and then let me do a run of yeah, live test. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, there's, there's a time and place for live testing and maybe it's when you're like, you know, you got a couple options and you've, you iterated so much on PickFu and you're confident that they're both good, then sure. You can, you can throw it up on the live test and then, you know, just go with the, the final sales data. But as you're developing things, like you want to do that off platform. Yeah, that makes that make, that makes sense. And, and I'm very, I'm very uh, similar in, in thought. You know, there are some maybe specific things that you can do your own testing on, like you know, PPC campaigns, time yep. of day. You know, that, that's not something. You know, you don't you don't put something into a PickFu audience where, hey, um, you know, like like what time of day are you most likely to click on this PPC? No, you should be looking at your data. You know, for 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 that. But but. You, you bring up a very good point. You know, if somebody's considering, um, you know, extensions to uh, their variation line, you know, new colors or new sizes or something, you know, you don't want to live test that after thousands and thousands of dollars of of, uh, of investment. Um, so, so that's you know, I, I'm I don't want to come up with a red background coffin shelf on my own, order five hundred, and then have a completely flop, you know, because it's not very good. Um, yeah. I actually did that once, you know, uh, j just as a test, just for project X, where we actually started the coffin shelves with, um, I think like five or six images. We actually at one time, we have a pink and purple one now, but what I did after the black one, I, I bought pink and purple, just, I was able to do like a hundred units. So I I'm dumb. I knew about pick food back then. I don't know why I didn't think about that, but what I did was I, uh, when I order the black coffin shelves from the manufacturer, I, I can just have them spray paint it another color. So I just had them do like, it wasn't even like a hundred, it was like 50. I had them do 50 black or a pink, purple, and then we had a green, red, and brown. So that, it didn't cost me much money. I figured hey, this would be a fun experiment. And then sure enough, the, the green and the, the, the brown just completely flopped, um, but the purple and pink did really well. But that, that that still cost me money because it took me a long time to sell out of the, the green and brown yeah. coffin shelves. Where probably all I had to do was <laughs> run a pick foo and yeah, I would have known. Unsold you know, inventory, unsold inventory will kill you. And I, that's the other use case that we see a lot of people is just color variations, right? Because mm. your manufacturer can help you generate a bunch of different color variations for you, and you have all these these products that you haven't ordered yet, and just test it out, and then you'll at least have a better idea of the breakdown yeah. of how much of each to order and. You know, maybe that yellow and green is not not one you would order, right? Um, any other unique, you know, I think we've talked about the the most common ones, but have you run across, you know, I know you don't look yourself at every single uh, pick food poll that people are doing, but have you ever just browsed and you're like, what in the world? Like, I never thought that anybody would use it in this way. And, uh, you know, not one of the more common ones that we've been talking about today. Um, one of the other ones that I think more people should do more of that I that I've seen only a handful of time is... Um, ranking the the features so you know like if you're buying a coffin shelf like what are the features that are important to you right because you're only going to highlight like you know like five features in your bullet points or or in your title but maybe there's you know eight different features or a dozen features that you think are important so you could actually put up all the you know you could start with just like the high level like a you know not even flushed out but just like the points like a you know it's reusable it's washable like it's you know whatever sturdy and just and put them all out and tell them to rank it and you're going to come back with like the top five features that maybe you should be focusing on because i think i think people just assume a lot of times i, I did this one i was uh, making a presentation um uh, about some kitchen tongs and what was interesting was 
people really gravitated towards like BPA free and nonstick. And, you know, in my mind, like if I were selling, I'm like, oh, well, of course, it's obviously going to be BPA free. Like, why do I even need to highlight that? But people want to feel reassured. And when they're clicking through the search results, they're like, well, I chose this one because it said nonstick and BPA free. And, you know, depending on who you are, like you might just assume like that's that's good enough. But I think um, actually testing it to like, hey, what are the factors that are important to you? Once you flush them out, you could also test them like, you know, um, how do these bullets compare to like my competitors or maybe like two different uh, versions of like your bullet text. But I think even before that, just like get them to rank what's important. All right. So, you know, as we know, you know, Helium 10 audience uh, is right there. And the, a matter of fact, let me let me just show people where it's at in your in your dashboard. Let me show my screen here. So, guys, if you just go to the top right here and you hit tools in your Helium 10 account, it's right under listing optimization. And then you hit audience. And actually, there's probably a couple. You know, here's one that I did a, a while back for a coffin egg tray that we did. Uh and sure enough, the one that I thought would be picked was not the one that the majority picked that had a score of 60 right there. But anyways, like this is inside of Helium 10, actually. So, you know, obviously uh, people who have Helium 10 can use it. W what are some tools, you know, that that this this audience you know can be kind of paired with or how can people use it in the context of, of other Helium 10 tools? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of interesting, obviously Helium 10 has a ton of different tools. Um, some of the more obvious things that you could test out are, as you're generating other creative assets like, um, you know, portals or product inserts, um, even as you're trying to decide on what template to use maybe for, for portals, I think it's important to test the, test out the templates against your target audience, right? Because um, I actually ran a poll um, just playing around with the templates and I saw there was like a blue thank you landing page and then like a white one, like, you know, seems kind of, you know, innocuous, but I tested it against men because, you know, maybe I'm selling against men and the blue one won by landslide. Um, huh. But if I was just, if I was a woman and, you know, maybe uh, just, you know, just chose whatever I like, maybe I would have chosen the white one and it wouldn't have resonated as well. And so not to say that one template is necessarily better than another, but for your target audience, one might appeal yeah. more. So like maybe you're selling mm -hmm. to women 65 and plus versus like, you know, men 18 and 24, you know, it's worth, it's worth testing out these kinds of things. Uh, you know, because it, it may resonate differently. Is there a, a time where this is going to, you know, start to be available for like, you know, hey, I want this to be Amazon Prime members in, in Europe or, or in Australia or different countries, uh, Canada, Mexico, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. We're actually uh, private beta testing that right now, actually. So we're, um, we're testing out Germany right now. Mm -hmm. um, also Canada and Australia with uh, UK coming right after that. So kind of in order of, you know, um, Amazon marketplace popularity. So we definitely want to hit that German marketplace. And yeah, so that's the number two, uh, for those yeah, who didn't exactly. know, that's number two in all of the world next, uh, USA. Yeah. And I, and I suspect very different buying, buying habits and buying preferences. So I think it's really important for any seller who's trying to get into the German market that they actually do test a lot of, first of all, test that their, that their product is interesting and people would actually buy their product, but then you may even need to test out your branding and your packaging and obviously your main images and, and copy because all these different cultures, like they, they have different preference for, preferences for how they like to see, you know, even packaging, right? Like some, some cultures like very simplistic, clean packaging, others like all the detail and ingredients like listed on it, right? And, and you kind of need to know that. All right. Uh, I just got a notification that it finished. So let's go ahead and share my screen again. Here we go. Uh, 50 people answered in 21 minutes, it says here. And the winner was that red one uh, with a score of, of 62. Now, now, how does this work where... You know, there's only 50 people who, who responded here, but how does this scoring work? Because I see a score of 62, 14, and 38. Yeah, so for these rank ones, um, if you scroll down, there's actually a, a, an explanation. Click on that detailed vote counts on the right. Oh, detailed vote yeah. counts. Ah. Yeah, so it, it, uh, it does this process called the instant runoff where basically um, it takes the first place votes and... Um, kind of starts consolidating the second place votes and the third place votes until uh, until you have like uh, enough to declare a winner. And so a lot of a lot of political elections are starting to use this kind of uh, counting mechanism just because um, it gives you the most preferred option. If you were just to say like just choose one option out of three to eight, like you would never mm -hmm. you would never uh, get a majority. But when you ask their preference, you actually um, you know maybe it was the third third place that, you know, 
it could end up winning because like it was like the most preferred because maybe first place for some was like so polarizing that people hated it yeah on the flip yeah. side so that's kind of how it works interesting all right uh let's see i also have the demographic reports okay so it looks like um oh wow so I'm, not only do i just get the demographics of everybody but it actually breaks down like if a certain demographic tended to vote for one of these options even wow i didn't even realize that um 50 percent ah very very interesting so really it's it's very similar like it doesn't matter male or female here um they all voted uh along party lines <laughs> here for 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 a versus b's as we're talking about polls and pol pol political stuff here um but what is this one here 45 to 50 the age group of 45 to 50 um so see, see, the, the, this is what this tells me. Like the age group of forty-five to fifty, it looks like they have a tendency to vote for our coffin shelf. So I guess we're appealing to that older market there. But let's go ahead and see some of these responses now. And and the winner, by the way, guys, was that red one with thirty-one votes. Uh, but ours was not far, far behind. And and let me see if anybody. I'm just gonna run a run a, a search on this page to see if anybody said not one person mentioned stickers. So they they might not even realize that they, they were stickers. Um, but, but yeah, a lot of people, let me see how many people said the word red, 33 different people mentioned the word red in the, in the responses. So that's obviously, yeah, yeah. Everybody's talking about the red B they said it's scary looking. I like the color contrast in the first choice, more eye catching. And I picked a last as it appears blue, which I don't associate with it. Aha. What in the world does my picture look? You know what? That's an interesting point. See, we actually did a 3D rendered image here. Some people might think, let me see if anybody else mentioned that. They, they think it looks blue. Let me see how many people said. Seven people mentioned blue here. And I never would have thought that because I know it's black. And then I never even like, wow, it does look when you compare it to, to this black, this color black. Interest that is something serious right there. Now that is yeah, I, I need I might need to go in and change this picture. Like I thought it looked great because I was like, it's so much brighter. You like you can see some contrast a little bit more because they manipulated the image. But now it's so much that people think it's see, look at look at that. Guys, we, we did this live and I found out a couple of things that I never would have have thought about. So guys, it, you need to be using this. You can, you can do it at pickfu.com, P-I-C-K-F-U, or those of you who are Helium 10 members, just do it right in your Helium 10 account because you've already got the billing already and everything tied. It's the same exact audience and and same process. Uh, it, we didn't make our own PickFu. That, that's tied to the PickFu website. Now, um, Justin, it is, uh, we usually do a 30-second tip of the day, as you know, our tss, so some you've been giving us a lot of tips and strategies, so it doesn't have to be about PickFu. It could be about anything you want. Uh, what is a, a 30 second tip or strategy you can give our listeners today? Yeah. So the, the tip I have is that, um, is to try testing something that doesn't exist yet. I think a lot of people tend to come and think that, um, they can only test their, their products that they already have or images that they've already generated. So come and test the concept, come and test, uh, you know, new copy or 3d renders or products that you, you're not even purchased yet. Like maybe you grab the image off Alibaba or you're, you ask your manufacturer for some, some sample images and you want to test it against competitors. Um, I think that's a really important way to start out your, your process. And as we've seen with the coffin stuff, um, it, it could have saved a lot of, uh, you know, probably generated a lot more sales. Maybe if we had figured out the red thing earlier, um, or even the fact that the black looks a little bit blue. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right. If people want to reach out to you for more questions or something, how can they find you on the interwebs out there? Yeah, they can just email me at justin at pickfood.com. You can find me on LinkedIn um, or just come to pickfood.com and, and chat with anyone on the team. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, be seeing you hopefully at, at Sell and Scale. Yep. Awesome. We'll see you later. chị đang bán hàng trên Amazon, Scarbot cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi. Vì đang tiếp brand với USBTO, từ Helium Pen, từ Jingle Scout, Logistics và Warehouse. Xem thêm thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé.